Welcome to episode nine of the Four Faces of Love. So glad that you've joined us. And I want to say that if you would hit that little thumbs up button, if you're enjoying this, that'll help us. Uh, it'll put us before more people. And if you haven't already, subscribe to our YouTube channel and let people know that you love what you hear and tell other people about what we're doing. Okay, our text verse for this is found in Ephesians chapter 3, actually three verses, that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith, Ephesians 3.17, that you being rooted and grounded in love, and that's our aim, you can't be rooted and grounded if you don't know that love has four faces, that you may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, length, depth, and height, and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. In other words, you may be a very loving person, and if you only understand the generosity or the giving, forgiving side of God, if that's the only face you know, you will not be filled with all the fullness of God. You're one of those people who will stumble when you read about Jesus dealing with the money changers in the temple, how he took cords and whipped them and turned over their tables. So you won't understand that because the only face that you know is the face of love and breadth and giving. Now that's important, and that's what we're talking about but it's not the only face. And uh, trust me, we will get into those other faces. God's love wins. It prevails through its generosity. God is not defeated by his generosity. He's not taken advantage of by his generosity. Now, now make no mistake, there are people who do receive from God and do not appreciate him. They are ungrateful. Romans chapter 1 is a description of the heathen who had all the great things of God and knew about God and were not grateful. So it's possible for people to receive from God and not be grateful and not uh, be touched by his generosity. So some Sometimes love doesn't turn those people, but God will prevail over them in the end. Now, breadth is the symbol of open-handedness, giving. Near the end of his ministry, Jesus did something that a lot of people may not understand. Uh, it, 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 it is significant because of where it is placed. And uh, it's not something he did at the very beginning. It's near the end of his ministry. It's near the climax. We're getting very near the end. You're watching a movie and you're moving toward the climax. Then trust me, every detail that is being presented to you in that movie is critical. They want you to focus on that detail. It will come up later. Well, this is such a thing. Genesis, I'm sorry, Luke's Gospel chapter 21 he looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury. And he saw also a certain poor widow putting in two mites. So he said, truly, I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all. For all these out of their abundance have put in offerings for God. But she out of her poverty put in all the livelihood that she had. So what's he talking about here? And why does he take his disciples purposely to this place? Another place says he took them to this point for them to see this. So he wanted them to get this. Well, he is giving them a picture of himself. Now, he stresses that she is giving out of her poverty. In other words, her giving is done out of her limitations. Now, in the last episode, I talked about how God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God gave out of his omniscience. Christ was given before the world was ever created. He was a lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So that's the omniscience of God. He still gave, even though he knew that man would turn against him. God gave out of his power, so God was ready to demonstrate his character and nature by the amazing miracles of Christ, the greatest of which was the resurrection of the dead. God is giving out of his omnipresence, and he is showing the presence of the Spirit of God throughout all the places Christ goes. And so uh, he had an anointing and a presence unlike any of the other prophets who had ever ministered in Israel. So you see God loving out of this great power. But when Christ comes to be a human, everything changes. 
because he now becomes finite. He is limited. The Bible says he could be tempted as we are in all points. And so if that doesn't show you something of his limitations, uh, then nothing else will. Jesus was limited. This woman was limited. She had a very small income. And she is willing to give to God these two mites out of her limitation. And Jesus said that it is more than any other gift received. It is given out of great want. Now, he is talking about himself, and he's showing his disciples what he is about to do. And keep in mind, there were two mites, and it's going to show up here and what he teaches about his death. Now, Paul points us to this. He points us to the limitation of Christ, and so I want to turn you to the book of Philippians chapter 2. We're going to read beginning in verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. Now that is a Greek phrase. There's a phrase there in Greek, and a word, kenosis. He emptied himself. He poured out the glory. Uh, at different times it was manifested just to show his identity, but he did not live in a constant state of glory. Isaiah says there is no beauty that we should desire. In other words, if you saw Jesus, he didn't have a halo. And so there were times that he was glorified like as in the Mount of Transfiguration, but he didn't minister with that kind of glow all the time. Uh, the Bible says he made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. Well, we don't have those halos. So he came like us. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. So these are limitations. The fact that he could die shows that there is a limitation. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and has given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven, of those on earth, and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So we see here the limitation of Jesus. Now I want to read to you from 26 translations because I, I love the way that it explains all of this. So let's go back into it. Philippians 2, 5. Let Christ Jesus be your example as to what your attitude should be. For he who has always been God by nature did not cling to his prerogatives as God's equal. But he stripped himself of all privileges and rightful dignity by taking the nature of a servant and became like human beings and being truly recognized as human, he finally humiliated himself in obedience so as to die, going so far as to actually die a criminal's death on a cross. And that is why God raised him from the very highest place and has conferred on him the name which is supreme above every other name, so that in adoration of the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of all who dwell in earth and all who dwell in heaven and in the underworld, and that every tongue might openly confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So he did his greatest works in his limitations. And so this widow's mite, she's giving two mites, and here's the twofold suffering of Jesus, and it goes back to what we talked about with the ox. The ox suffers in his life. He has no will of his own in his life. His master comes and gets him, and he is submitted to his master. Through that ring in his nose, he does not get to walk the will of his own. He has to do what his master leads him to do. Jesus was perfectly in his life submitted to the will of the Father. But then in his death, he gives everything up. And for this reason, he could say, to his followers in the Gospel of John, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. In other words, he was saying the giving of my body and the shedding of my blood. Those are the two things. 
and that's the reason that the widow has the two mites. He's showing the complete submission of the Messiah, giving out of great limitation everything he had. And for this reason, God is exalting him to a place above every other being in the universe. And trust me, every being, every being, sometimes I get frustrated with evil rulers and powerful men, then I stop and imagine there will be a day when they will see him and they will bow the knee and they will confess Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It's all the time I have for today, but we'll wrap this sequence up tomorrow. I hope to see you then. I want to thank you for watching our podcast today. And if you really liked it, would you please give us a little thumbs up by clicking on that sign down below. And then I would encourage you to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our future podcasts because they're all going to be good. And if you would like to support us financially, either with a one-time gift or recurring gift, you can do that by clicking on the link below or going to myfaithroots.com. Thank you so much for watching this program.